When people ask me about what is the future of uh, digital and e-commerce in the Philippines, there are many thoughts that goes into my head. But I think the primary anchor would be the quality of internet access in our country. At the moment, we are currently pegged as one of the slowest and in fact expensive countries in the region for in terms of our internet access. But if we want to improve and we want to be able to compete with the rest of the world insofar as e-commerce and digital is concerned, having fast internet, making it affordable and available in as many locations in the country, especially in rural areas, will be critical. We need to create a broadband master plan that where we can explore new spectrums, new facilities, new bandwidths or frequencies to allow us to be able to provide connectivity to as many Filipinos as possible. Modernizing our ports and our customs regulation is also critical if we want to improve digital in our country. At the moment, you see China e-commerce websites uh, selling products and services online and offering free delivery to the rest of the world. For most countries in the region, including the Philippines, we are unable to offer this kind of benefit primarily because our customs taxes are stringent or stiff and therefore enabling our players or our sellers to compete at this level. Most citizens in our country are unbanked and most of them don't have bank accounts. And because of that, when people buy online, a big majority of them would pay through cash on delivery. However, if we want e-commerce to grow, we have to make sure that we will be able to go beyond cash on delivery and make it comfortable for people to do transactions online using various payment methods. Although our challenge with the current existing methods, although they are there, however, the fees that they are charging for the past 5 or 10 years have not decreased or have not improved. Therefore, not making it attractive for people who would like to sell items at an affordable rate, especially if they are micro items to begin with. A challenge for Asia is protecting our consumers. When we encourage people to buy and sell products online and do cross-border e-commerce, definitely there will be challenges or there will be problems between the buyer and the seller. More often than not, when buyers are sellers from different countries, we cannot offer them any respite or resolution on how to go about these concerns unless the portals are the one who sanctions it and have presence in the countries where the buyers and the sellers are operating. As a region, ASEAN, or as an economy like in the case of APEC, we'll have to embrace standards or have to embrace processes to be able to push for cross-border e-commerce but at the same time making sure both buyer and the seller are protected. A cybercrime also becomes global where your attacker can belong to another country attacking a site or service in another country, enforcement and running after hackers has become a challenge. Although most of the countries in Asia have begun having their own cybercrime legislation, data privacy legislation, or laws for that matter, however, running after criminals is not an easy task, especially if they are from different countries. For the future of digital and e-commerce to prosper, players in the world have to come together and come up with new policies, modern policies, to address these challenges and at the same time protect the businesses and the consumers trading in this space. So where are we heading? We're seeing that for new businesses who would like to market their products and services online, we're now reaching a point where we refer to as digital first. Explore the use of digital to increase revenue, achieve greater reach, work with affiliates or individuals or influencers to promote your products and services online rather than just relying on ads, especially if you are a micro business where you have least resources for your ads. And the future battleground for e-commerce and digital for that matter will be for basic goods including food, groceries, and providing an omni-channel shopping experience. Digital is also challenging the way we learn. People today, rather than relying on schools, now turn to video sites like YouTube to learn. So the challenge for educators now is from straight lecturer type giving information to their students to shifting to learning by doing. There's also a discussion about having a currency for digital rather than relying on our traditional money for that process. Are we going to use Bitcoin as a currency. Although most countries do not recognize it and treated it like any goods being purchased online. However, if more and more players will trade by it, should countries in the region recognize it as a currency or should players really come up with a new currency that can be recognized by regulators? The future of digital is bright. Digital and e-commerce can become an economic growth contributor and can become Asia's competitive advantage. And for the Philippines, it can also serve as its competitive 
competitive advantage. We should encourage more micro and small and medium enterprises to do e-commerce. We should encourage more citizens to buy products and services online and explore its benefits. It will be very valuable if also most government services will offer e-commerce services so that we don't have to visit a government office and line up eating huge number of hours just to be able to get things done. We also need to have a process where we can protect both the seller and the buyer through policy and at the same time enforcing them. This includes uh, protecting data privacy and running after cyber criminals. And of course, uh, fast and cost competitive internet access where we can compete with the rest of the region, encouraging more startups to operate in this space and also encouraging more investors to come to the country. Currently in the Philippines, e-commerce is pegged at 10% of our gross domestic product. Our vision is to push this to reach 25% by 2020. And for this to all happen, it requires both government and private sector to work together, create programs, create policies, investments, increase confidence by consumers to make the future of digital and e-commerce bright and see it as an economic growth contributor and the country's competitive advantage.